Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this new style of gathering that we have been trying to do and I pray that it is a blessing to you despite where we find ourselves. We are all together in spirit even if we are not together in body. There are only a few announcements I have this morning. One is that we have begun a hope fund that you can donate towards to families in our, amongst us as well as in our community that are in need during this time of pandemic because of loss of jobs and other reasons. We also are having youth group on Monday and I'd invite any of the youth who would like to join in via Zoom. I will be on there and hopefully several of us will also be on there, the Sankers as well. Hope you can join us at 6.30 via Zoom, and if you need the link, uh, you can contact me or the office for that link. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Let us all join together, both near and far, in today's call to worship. The joy of the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ is with us. We rejoice in the blessing God has poured into our lives. Even though we hear words of doubt, we are called to believe. Even though the world withdraweth back again into darkness, we focus on the light. Thanks be to Christ who gives us the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God by singing hymn number 275, an oldie but a goodie.
And now, may we join together in the prayer for today. Generous God, we thank you for your presence with us in all our lives. As we gather this morning, we are reminded of the many times we have doubted and feared. Today, banish our fears with the memory of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remind us again that through all our troubles, doubts, and fears, your power, mercy, and love are with us. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sins, we deceive only ourselves. And God's truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is merciful and just, will hear our prayers and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In that confidence, let us come before the Lord with the prayer of confession. God of empty tombs and empty people, when we hesitate to speak of your hope, forgive us and give us a voice. When we find it difficult to love one another, forgive us and give us new compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us and remind us to be humble. When we stay locked behind our fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. We cannot believe your word of new life. Forgive us and fill us with your joy. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we live in the insurance of knowing that Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ prays for us, Christ reigns in power for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. That old life is gone. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Our first reading today is Psalm 16, Song of Trust and Security in God. Protect me, O God, for I, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God, God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A second reading from the New Testament, John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house 
where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. And our epistle is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you in this you have rejoiced even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, be, Thanks to be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, <clears throat> empty me of me and fill me with you so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. And Lord, open the ears of the hearers that are among us, both near and far, that they may hear what it is you are calling on your, their hearts to take from your word into their lives and into the world. 
We pray this in your precious name. Amen. This pandemic has wreaked havoc on many people's psyches. In the recent weeks, I've heard of a decrease in all crimes except one, domestic violence, which is rising during this time. And I've heard now, just this week, of more suicides, relapses, and even the death of the son of one of our fellow ecumenical ministers due to a relapse and subsequent overdose. The ripple effects of this societal shutdown are starting to take its toll in more ways than we can even imagine. This week, I found myself recognizing that it's taking its toll on me. I thought I didn't have any fears related to this pandemic, but I learned that I did, and that they were affecting my psyche and controlling my actions. I believe that when I was sharing my concerns about my son who is struggling with online learning, that it was just that, me sharing my concerns. However, when reading today's gospel passage, it hit me that these weren't sharing my concerns, but that they were complaints that stem from fear. Fear that my son will regress so terribly he can't come back from it. Fear that I can't provide for him what he needs. Fear that this will harm the hard work he has put in to come as far as, as he has, and so on and so on. What I realized is even though Easter was only a week ago, and I do believe Jesus is alive, I forgot to accept Christ's message. I forgot to accept the message that Christ gives his disciples in this passage and the message he gives throughout his life. In today's gospel passage, we have that familiar story of doubting Thomas, as it is often referred to. Yet today, I think by exploring this text, we will see how it speaks so much to the message we need to hear during this time of pandemic, the message Christ wants us to accept. The message he first proclaimed each time he makes an entrance in this passage. The message that can overcome our fears and anxieties. The message of Christ's peace. Now this passage picks up on the evening of the resurrection. This means the disciples' first reaction was fear. Because they went and hid behind locked doors. Without any explanation, Jesus appears among them, speaking directly to their fears by offering first his peace. Jesus again speaks this greeting when Thomas is among them. These words of peace in this passage are likely recalling the words of comfort that he offered his disciples in the Last Supper. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This peace is different than worldly peace. This peace comes from the knowledge that no matter what suffering, hurt, or harm the world is causing, God's compassion, love, and care is able to overcome our fears and anxieties. Think about it. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the disciples? I bet you can. They're behind closed doors because they're afraid of the ramifications of going out. If we're honest, we will acknowledge that we remain inside or try to remain inside because of our fears. Now, maybe we're not afraid of getting this virus, but we are likely afraid of being a carrier to someone else, and as such, we try to remain behind closed doors. According to the Gospels, the last time the disciples would have seen Jesus was when they were with him at the Last Supper. After that, they all would have abandoned him, and Peter even denied him outright. So imagine the expectation that's going on here when Jesus is coming back. It's like the disciples are saying to themselves, oh crap, he's coming back, and he's probably ticked off at us. Yet what does Jesus say? 
the only thing Jesus does is offer his peace. Notice Jesus doesn't criticize or judge them for their fears and doubt. Instead, he immediately begins by offering peace. He loves them, and with his love, he turns their confusion into friendship, their fear and anxieties into trust. Sometimes we, too, let our fears and our anxieties think that our actions lead us to believe we should be punished, too. But Christ says, no. Take my peace instead. Let go of your fears and anxieties. Now, I had to realize that although my fears had turned into complaints, I could still turn and accept Christ's message of peace. Because as we remembered and recalled last week, Jesus' death and resurrection has made this message of peace available to anyone without them having anything to do to deserve it. And now, after having shared this message of peace, helping his disciples see he was not coming to judge them, but to love them, he reminds them of their call. Their call to let go of their fears and accept this message of peace and carry it to others. Jesus, after expressing peace, says to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus is empowering them. After giving the disciples peace and reminding the disciples of their call to share it with the world, Jesus continues to help them overcome fears and anxiety by giving them the spirit of truth. I think it'd be interesting if we know a little thing that's going on here. In that moment, Jesus breathes the spirit into the disciples. It's quite an interesting juxtaposition to what we see today. This imagery of being breathed on to receive the Spirit at this moment would likely induce some kind of underlying anxiety and in some sense parallels how we let our fears and anxiety keep us from allowing the Spirit to be present in our lives. Giving in to fears and anxiety is so much a part of being human that it's hard not to succumb to them and easily forget Christ's message of peace. Like myself, it sometimes happens so unconsciously that we don't even notice it. It's likely that this human attribute is why we so often find ourselves locking up the good news of Christ's peace that should be shared with others. The fears of saying something that goes against prominent voices causes us not to say anything at all. The question is, how do we live into that example that Christ gave us to go and share his peace with others? What does it mean to proclaim Christ's peace in these unprecedented times? Well, the text helps us. It gives us a clue. After Jesus shared his peace and showed his disciples the proof that it was him, they rejoiced. When we are joy-filled by Christ's peace, we cannot easily be shaken by those fears and anxieties, allowing us to share that peace with others. Today, we can proclaim Christ's peace by first rejoicing in the peace that was given to us to squash the fears and anxieties inside of ourselves. It's not easy feeling Christ's peace when the fear is more evidently knocking at our door. But Jesus reminds us in his final words that we are blessed if we who cannot see that peace come to believe in it. Isn't it great to know that Jesus was not trying to set up obstacles to experience his peace? He instead was in the business of meeting people where they were at and offering them his peace in that time and in that place. Jesus is sort of like the good doctor that doesn't prescribe the same thing to every patient. Rather, he recognizes that we are all different and our experiences are different. Our fears may be similar but they manifest in each of us differently. Yet all that doesn't matter because he finds a way to share his peace with anyone in any time. 
Let us remember that Christ comes behind locked doors, closed doors, or wherever we may be and offers us his peace. May we accept Christ's message of peace and rejoice in overcoming the fears and anxieties that we may have. And may we also remember that Christ gives us the spirit and sends us out into the world to share that peace with others. Alleluia. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God by singing hymn number 837. join me in prayer. Lord, you have given us your peace, and you have called us to that peace to accept its message of comfort, to squash all the fears and anxieties we have. But you have also called us to come to you with all our concerns. And so today, Lord, we lift up many. We lift up our world who is suffering. We lift up all of those who are risking their lives on the front lines of this. We ask, we lift up our lawmakers, our government, as they continue to make decisions. Lord, we also lift up to you those who are close to us. Today we lift up Walt, Ben, Barbara, Jerry, Bobby, Kathy, Sue, Alan, Mary, Nancy, Brenda and Ron, Maureen, Annette, Gary, Kathleen, Doug, Marie, Bob, Joellen, Sandy, Joe, Sydney, Bill, Don, George, Joyce, the Barron family, David, Tim, and many others that we name on our hearts. Lord, you know the needs of each and every one of the people we have listed and said or spoke on our hearts. 
But Lord, most importantly, that let them feel your peace and accept that message of peace during their times of suffering. Lord, we lift our hearts up to you, praying the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, may you go from this time remembering that Christ offers peace, peace that can overcome any fears or anxieties, even those we may not realize we have. Let the spirit of truth speak in you to share that peace with others. Go now accepting this peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen.